32. Luke chapter number 22. Luke chapter number 22. And we're going to look at verse number. Matter of fact, let's look at 31. It reads, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Well, Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, Strengthen your brethren. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Yes. For just a few moments, if I could just to arrest your attention on this thought, faith. Don't fail me now. Preach. Faith. Don't fail me. <laughs> don't fail me now. <laughs> you better say it. I remember, thank you. I remember growing up as a child. Uh, I am a proud matriculate, if you will, of the Mount Zion missionary. Baptist Church. Uh -huh. And growing up at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm sure some of my Mount Zion family is on with me right now. And I remember at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings, we would go to something that a lot of churches don't have now. We went to Sunday school. Uh, and when we went to Sunday school, we had, you know, we would gather together and we would do the initial opening and then we would disperse to our classes. And then when we got done with our classes, we came back together. Mm -hmm. And there was a little lady by the name of Miss Cynthia King. Come on, come on. Miss King would sit on the piano. We had a brown upright piano and she just played for the Sunday school and in her playing for Sunday school every week we had a hymn. Okay. We had a hymn that she would play and when she would play the hymn I remember you know back then those hymns Sister Monty didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Well. But now that I've gotten older those hymns have really registered in my heart. Mm -hmm. Say that. I remember a hymn like, I've come to the garden alone <laughs> while the dew is still on the roses yeah. and the voice I hear mm -hmm. in my ear, <laughs> the Son of God is calling and it was an act he walks with me <laughs> and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I remember another hymn that they would sing. It said, Jesus is all the world to me. Yes. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am down to him, I go. When I'm sad, no other one can cheer me. So when I am sad, he makes me glad. He is my friend. Yes. But I remember, ladies and gentlemen, a few months ago, two of my dear friends experienced a loss, a major loss. Their daughter unexpectedly went home to be with the Lord. And they asked me to deliver her homegoing message. And in them asking me to deliver her homegoing message, Mr. Steve, I sat there 
And I was preparing my message, and one of those good old songs that Sister Cynthia King, back at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, used to play on that ground upright piano came back to my mind. Come on, come on. The song said, time is filled <laughs> with swift transition. <laughs> None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Yes. Hold to God's unchanging Man. hand. Yeah, yeah. Preacher. Literally, ladies and gentlemen, the first stanza of the song tells us how in this life, in one moment, things can be one way. And then all of a sudden, they can change up on us unexpectedly. And we find ourselves, as a matter of fact, that was the topic of my sermon that day. Lord, help me to handle my new normal. Yes. Come on, come on. Yes. I feel like in my spirit this morning, there are some people who are watching me who are also dealing with a new normal. Yes. And what has happened with us is the very thing that this song talks about in that first stanza. How time is filled with swift transition. One day it's like this and not even the next day. Sometimes it's later on the same day that things have changed and we find ourselves dealing with a new normal. And just when we think we got that pattern down, here comes something else that will shake us to our core and, have, and become our new normal all over again. And what happens with us as human beings, we like to have at least some level of stability and comfort. We like to know that when we get up in the morning, we can kind of dead gauge what our day will look like. We know some things will happen, but at least we should be able to gauge what our day is going to look like. Yes. Preach. Preach. But now, here we are, facing crisis. Well. Literally in a short period of time, we went from life as usual mm -hmm. to now everything has changed. Yes. As we look across the world, can I preach like I feel it today? As we look across the world right now, nobody is going un unaffected by the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. nobody. nobody. Everybody is in some way affected by it. Yes. It's one thing, now listen right here, it was one thing when you were just watching it on TV and it was somebody else somewhere far away going through it, mm -hmm. but now it has hit home. Yes. Yes. The economy of even North America, of the U.S. and even around the world has been affected by something we can't even see with the naked eye. Yes. God. Every household in some way has been affected by it. They tell us to stay home. We're safer at home. Don't go out. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we could go wherever we wanted to. But now, there's concern about us going out. Yes. Parents are now having to school their children at home. They have, my sister calls it D.C., uh, what she say, D.C.U., the Crib University. Uh -huh. come on, come on. Children learning at home. Job furloughs, company shutdowns, family members dying. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Yes. Literally, just this week, I got the report of two individuals that I know personally, mm. that I love dearly, mm. okay. have the coronavirus. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. And so now I thank God that they are people of faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Because they've been, both of them, even though they have it, have been on the upswing of it. Yes. They had to fight through it, yes. but they've been on the upswing. Yes. I thank I God for that good news in spite of what the bad news said. Yes. Mm. Preach, sir. You know, for the hundreds of thousands that have recovered from the coronavirus, there's still some level of uncertainty among the rest of the population as to whether they will live or they will die if they were to contract this disease. Mm -hmm. So, for many, 
Fear is at an all-time high. Anxiety is at an all-time high. Yes, Depression is at an all-time high. Yes. Come on, come on. Even suicide yes. is at a high. Yes. Matter of fact, I was talking to someone recently, and they shared with me that in one particular city, in 24 hours, they had 10 reported suicides. Mm -hmm. My God. Ten in 24 hours. In that particular city, y'all, uh, 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 they had not even had ten from January up until now. Mm -hmm. But in that city, in 24 hours, because of the fear that has gripped the hearts of many, uh -oh. Come on. suicide, ten suicides tempo, tempo. in a day. Mm. You know, just last Sunday evening, I was preaching. And I'm going to take my time right here for just a moment. Take your time, sir. And I preached from Jeremiah chapter number 29. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about how so many people, help me, Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. have used Jeremiah 29, 11 as a name it and claim it, blab it and grab it scripture. I know the thoughts I think for you, thoughts of peace and not evil, uh, to give you an expected end. And people shout off of that. They will rejoice that we rejoice off of that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against rejoicing off of that. But the problem is we neglected to look at verse number 10. <laughs> In verse number 10, God began to speak to them and tell them, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I'm going to bring you out in due time, but right now you're going to be in it for a while. Yes. They had prophets that were telling them that they were going to come out quickly and it was going to be all right, but then God had to send Jeremiah with some news to tell them you're going to be in it for a while. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, ladies and gentlemen, I, you know, in my opinion, it, the, the only thing that's worse than receiving what appears to be bad news is to get false hope. Mm -hmm. Talk, sir. Listen, don't, 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 don't give me false hope. I'd rather you go ahead and tell me the truth about whatever it is I need to expect. Don't give me false hope. Listen, if we in a relationship and it ain't gonna work out, don't give me false hope about the relationship. Just go ahead and say, hey, this ain't, this ain't gonna work. And let's go ahead and part ways before we end up in a bad situation. Yeah. Don't give me <laughs> false hope. Just keep it real. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, Bishop. Too many times we want to get a word that feels good to us, that tickles our ear. But I submit to you that just because you get the word that tickles your ear does not mean it's the word that came from God. Mm -hmm. right yeah. Can you imagine being these people who were taken into exile in Babylon and literally Jeremiah tells them, don't get caught up on what your prophets say, because for, for 25,550 days, you're going to be here. Uh -huh. Jesus. Now, to most people, that would seem like such an indefinite time. Mm -hmm. It would seem like such a difficult uh, a number of days, 25,550 days, I'm going to be in this place right here. Jesus. Jesus. Faith don't fail me now. now. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, don't fail me. I, I can't let my faith fail me. 25,000, according to Jeremiah, he was talking to them, he said 25,550 days, in other words, 70 years, you're going to be here. But now where people miss the shout is in this. Verse number 5 and 6, God tells them to go ahead and build houses. Tells them to go marry off their children. Mm -hmm. Tells them to plant vineyards. Now why does that make me shout? He told them, I want you to do this so that you will increase in the land and not diminish. Mm -hmm. Lord, while we're in the middle of a corona crisis, you've got to grab a hold to the grace of God mm -hmm. that will tell you that he's getting ready to cause you to be sustained and increased even while everything 
everything else is going under. It might look like it's going down right now. But ladies and gentlemen, you got to grab a hold to the grace and to the faith in God that says he is my sustainer. Lord, I feel it come. Yeah. Ah, he is my sustainer. I'm grateful to God for being my sustainer. When I wake up in the morning, I got to declare he is my sustainer. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it feels like. Job might be shut down. But I can still declare, God, you are my sustainer. He is my sustainer. So you can find hope in the fact that he is your sustainer. I remember Sister Cynthia King used to play a song that said, my hope is built hey, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. My, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name, yes. on Christ. The solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand. Now just give me a moment because I was talking to my bishop yesterday, Bishop Gary Wright, mm -hmm. and as I was talking, he called me and he was checking on me to make sure I'm okay. And then he started to encourage me. And then he asked me to say some words to him. Mm. And I began to think about it. I said, Bishop, you know, something amazes me. None of us ask for where we are right now. Come on, come on. And I wasn't talking about Corona in that moment. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the fact that right now, uh, almost seven years ago, Bishop Wright suffered a major stroke. Mm -hmm. Suffered a major stroke. Lost a lot of his abilities. You're talking about one of the strongest leaders I know. Mm -hmm. yes. And lost so many of his faculties. He's still functional, still able to move and do things, but he still lost so much. Yes. But you know what amazed me? And when I told Bishop yesterday, I told him, I said, Bishop, here it is. You went through the stroke. But this morning you on the phone calling me. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Checking on me. Yes. Doing what a pastor Do. does. <laughs> doing what even if now 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 if that had been many of us, we would have tapped out and said, God, I am done. Because I I didn't sign up for this. Yes, I, you know, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, Sister Cynthia King is coming back to my mind again. And there's a little song we used to sing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in Sunday school. In Sunday school. There's a song we sang at Mount Zion in Sunday school. It said, I am on mm, the battlefield yes. for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, we got a problem. <laughs> we sang that song and as we sang that song, I mean, that song was always one that got folk happy. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him until I die. I am on the battlefield. But so many people, I wonder, did you really mean it? Come on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, that for most people, they're okay with being in God's army as long as it means there's no real warfare. That's what I came to preach about this morning. Because there are people who, who they're okay with being a, a soldier in the army of the Lord as long as there's no real warfare or as long as they feel like they get to pick the battles that they go in. Come on, come on, preach. Hey, it's okay as long for them. It's okay as long as you are in boot camp being trained. 
You'll keep on singing, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. You as long as, because it's a controlled fire. When you're in boot camp, you're, you're not in as much danger. You are protected. They're trying to train you for battle. Some of y'all didn't realize that when we were preaching to you, telling you it's time for you to get back on your knees, when we were preaching to you, telling you to realign your life, when we were preaching to you, telling you to go to the secret place, when we were preaching to you, telling you Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, go to the closet, and he who sees in secret will reward you openly. When we were telling you this, you thought we were just talking, but we were really preparing you for war. Yes. Thanks, sir. Woo. My God. Oh, Lord, I feel it in here. All oh, this time, God been trying to prepare us for war. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. So we have people now yeah. who can't handle what we're dealing with right now. Because right. <laughs> whether you realize it or not, most of us, we if we really had to take a look, we would not have signed up to be in this warfare right. that we are in right now. Okay. Ah, this warfare that we're in, number one, is a biological warfare. Uh -huh. I said it's biological warfare. We're being hit by a virus that we can't even see with our naked eye. We've been hit, and the thing is, the biological warfare has not necessarily been sent from some other person or some other nation to try and attack us because this thing is going around the world. It's biological warfare. It's coming from even in nature. We're in biological warfare. Lord have mercy. But with the biological warfare, ladies and gentlemen, has also come uh, psychological warfare. Yes. Mm. We, we, we're dealing with psychological warfare. Now people are feeling the pressure of this thing in their emotions. Can I be real with you? The other night I was sitting in my house, Mr. Steve, and while I was sitting there, I was on my sofa, and I started feeling some unusual pain uh, right near my collarbone, and I started, I started feeling something, and then I said, Lord, what's wrong with me? And so in that moment, watch this, let me just be honest with you, and in that moment, my breathing started getting shallow, and the first thing the enemy said was, you got corona and you're gone die. Well, I had to get up from there and shake myself yes. because I was yes. in psychological warfare. I'm not going to sit here and act like for a moment it didn't hit me. I'm not going to sit here and act like as a human being for a moment it didn't disturb me because I don't know anybody who wants to die in, yeah. by way of having a gasp for, for their breath. Yeah. I don't know yeah. anybody that wants to die like that. Most of us would rather just go out of here sleeping peace. For. But ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm trying to get across to you today. I need you to understand that none of us has a, a monopoly on or can dictate the way our lives are going to go. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. Now is when we question and we find out. Did you really mean it when you said, I promised him that I would serve him until I die? Did you really mean it when you said, I'm on the battlefield? Being on the battlefield is right here in the middle of this psychological warfare when the devil's telling you you're about to die and you've got to start declaring the word of God. That's why, God, I feel it in here. That's why I told you. That's why we've been telling you. Preachers have been trying to tell you, get in the word of God. Yeah, Seek his yeah. place. Because in moments like this, you need to have something that you can hold on to. Yeah. You need to have something that you can grab a hold to in your heart that says, I will live and not die. I had to grab a hold to the truth of the word. I said, I'm not leaving here until I get dirt. Yes. Uh -huh. Come on. Yes, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. I said, Corona, I'm not leaving here mm -hmm. until I get done. Uh -huh. yes, done with what? Everything that God has assigned to my hands to do. Yes. I have declared in the name of the Lord. And listen, I said like Paul, I said, I won't be able to declare I fought a good fight. Yes. I, I finished my course. Yes. I kept the faith. Yes. And there is now laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord our God has prepared for those who love him. That's what I said about myself. Yes. And that's what I'm going to keep saying. Yes. And I thank God that when I started talking like that, my breath began to settle down. Yes. When I started talking like that, the pain began to subside. Let me tell you something. The enemy is going to keep presenting stuff to you that cause you to walk in fear in this 
moment. Psychological warfare. Lord have mercy. Not only are we in psychological warfare, he's trying to bring hopelessness and depression. Because watch this. If you ever get hopeless and depressed, You'll give up oh, yes. too soon. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I have a Bible in Psalm 34 that tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. I'm trying not to holler in here, but I feel my help. I said the Lord delivers us out of them all. There has to be something that is down on the inside of you. It can't be something you just try to put in now, but you got to start feeding on the word regularly every single day and remind yourself of his promises. Yes. And watch this. If that's Psalm 34 and that's Old Testament promise and now we're in the New Testament, uh -huh. Jesus' blood has been shed and we've got a greater covenant. What do you think God's going to do in this hour? I just want to encourage you. Hold on to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you trying to say, Long? Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to speak to yourself and say, Faith, don't fail me now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> there are so many people that now, you know, I think about I think about many of the wars that happened here in America. I'm about to round third base and come on home, y'all. But listen, I think about many of the wars that have happened here in America and how young men would go and they would hear that they were that they need they were needed. And so they would go and they would sign up to be in the military. They weren't necessarily going because they wanted to be made. They weren't going because they wanted to be bruised. Mm -hmm. They weren't going because they wanted to be killed in the line of duty. But they felt in their heart that I'm going to sign up in this battle because I want to see other folk get a chance to live. Yes. And sometimes, Lord have mercy, I can remember my daddy telling me about being in Vietnam and how the, 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 the enemy was all around them. And the only thing that kept some of the soldiers alive was the fact that they held on to hope that we're fighting for something bigger than us. we got to keep fighting. No matter what it looks like, we got to keep fighting because this is bigger than us. This is bigger than us. This is bigger than us. And you've got to say, this is bigger than me. Let me close this thing now. So ladies and gentlemen, faith, don't fail me now. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in a place now where it's, it's difficult, but this is where the proving ground of the faith that you say you have is. Hey, glory. This is the proving ground where now you find out whether you really got what you say you got or were you just coming to church. Oh, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm on. sorry, but I feel like preaching. Come on, preach. I, I come to tell you, this is the time where you prove what you really have. Because now the Bible said that the trying of your faith is working patience. And patience is working experience. And experience is building your hope. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are getting tried right now in your faith, we're dealing with psychological warfare. We're dealing with emotional warfare. We're dealing with economic warfare. We're dealing with the pains of warfare in our homes. We're dealing with the pains of warfare in our minds. Oh, we got to understand. Yes, that it's going to be difficult. But even though I didn't say I wanted to come in this to get made, if I can just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on I'm going to win this fight. Somebody give God a prize. Holding on to his promises. I'm holding on to his.
Don't fail me. Don't fail me now. now. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Zion, I wanted to come on today and encourage your heart. Somebody said, well, preacher, why did you preach like that? Because somebody needed to just have a moment of celebration. Yes. See, in the African-American tradition, when we get in our sermon, and it hits a high point like that, and we start to tune up. It's not because we're trying to be somebody great. We're trying to excite the people. No, I just want to give you something to celebrate about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I got a reason to celebrate. Yes. Yes, Lord. Because in the middle of all of this, I know who he is. Thank you, Jesus. I know who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's something about when you know who he is. Thank you, Jesus. It's something about when he's down on the top shoulder in your side. When he's down on the inside of you. Thank you, Lord. Keeping you. Thank you, Jesus. Keeping your mind. Yes, Lord. Keeping your heart. Encouraging you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Go ahead and praise him, Oh, son. yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. The thing is, I didn't even deserve his grace. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't even deserve it. None of us did. Have your way, Jesus. None of us deserve his grace. None of us deserve his mercy, but yet he still took care of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're yes, here. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, have your way. Will everybody make it to the other side of this? No, everybody won't. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But you know what? God forbid if anybody watching me thank you, Jesus. contracts it and if you know Jesus, listen, if by chance you contract it and the decision is made that you're not going to make it, just remember when you take your last breath on this side, you'll open your eyes on the other side. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But go ahead and start declaring, I don't plan on dying. Yes. I plan to live through this. Yes. <laughs> Glory. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's why God's Hallelujah. been trying to deliver us from some stuff. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because it would have killed us had we been in it right now. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. God's grace. Oh, yes. Thank you for your mercy. That's been Thank sufficient you for, your for us. Jesus, Jesus told Peter, I pray. And Jesus is telling you, I'm praying for you. Yes. Who better to pray for you than the Lord? Yes. Thank you. And his Jesus. prayer is that your faith Thank won't you, fail. Thank you, Lord. Faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, don't Jesus. Fail me now. Don't fail me now. God bless you, saints of God. I pray that you have been lifted, you have been encouraged. Yes, God. You've been strengthened by the word of God today. I send a message Thank out to Jesus. My Mount Zion folks, tell them to watch this because it would be a blast down memory lane. Oh, yes. I remember Thank those you. hymns. And that first hymn, or that hymn I talked about, Hold to His Hand, the final stanza I remember that they would sing, Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever the years may bring. If by earthly friends yes. you're forsaken, still more closely to him yes. cling. Hold to his hand. Yes. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. As I close this, I do want to encourage you. Look out for one another. Look out for one another. Check on your brothers and your sisters. And if you've got groceries, help make sure they've got something to eat. Amen. If you have things that they might need and you have a way of getting it to them, even if you got to drop it off at the door, be a blessing. Amen. 
Amen. This is the time where the church rises up. Yes. And I'm not just talking about those who are saved. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about we got to be a blessing to people who are unsaved so they can see the love of Christ coming yes. out of us. Amen. Amen. How can I be a blessing to somebody else that needs to know Jesus? Listen, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you to get to know him. You can simply pray the prayer and say, Lord, I understand that I'm a sinner. And I need you in my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Yes. And I turn my life over to you. Amen. And if you pray that prayer and mean it from your heart, if you believe that Jesus died on that cross to pay the price for every sin you ever committed and will commit, yes. guess what? If you receive that in your life and you're willing to let him be in control, yes. then you are born again. I encourage you, if you don't have a church, you can watch us online until this uh, this crisis is over. Mm -hmm. And then when you get done watching us online, when we get back out of this crisis and we're gathering together, I'm going to invite you to come and meet us here at Kingdom Life Church. We'd love to have you. Amen. We call our whole sanctuary the No Judgment Zone. Amen. We call our whole sanctuary the No Judgment Zone. I love you. God bless you. God keep you by the way. Please don't forget. Kingdom Life, we still need your support because we don't have anyone in the pews. Mm -hmm. And all of our people are at home, and so all of our members, of course, we ask that you uh, do your best in your tithing and your giving. And then to those who are not members, um, you can sow seed into this ministry. If you've been fed today and you want to sow anything into this ministry, you can cash app it at dollar sign KLCK and Kingdom Life uh, Church of Knoxville. We're glad to receive it. And we are very, very appreciative to you for sowing into the work of the Lord. God bless all of you. God bless all of you. We appreciate you. Amen. Have a great week.